The IMF holds a relatively large amount of gold among its assets, not only for reasons of financial soundness, but also to meet unforeseen contingencies. In fact, the IMF is the third largest official holder of gold in the world. Gold provides fundamental strength to the IMF's balance sheet. Gold holdings add to the credibility of the IMF's reserves in case it must deal with any non-repayment of lending, although this issue has not yet arisen in practice. This credibility provides the IMF with flexibility in the use of its financial resources to assist members. In these respects, the benefits of the IMF's gold are passed on to its members, including both creditors and borrowers. Most of the fund's gold was acquired before the 1978 amendment of the IMF's Articles of Agreement, which is the charter that governs all policies and activities of the IMF. The main source was the payment of quota subscriptions made when members join the IMF and also when there is an increase in their quota. One quarter of these payments was made in gold. Other sources of gold were repayments made by the IMF's borrowing members, who sometimes used gold to repay the interest and principal on their loans. Some members also sold gold to the IMF to boost their foreign exchange reserves. All the gold that the IMF acquired after 1978 came from transactions in which borrowing members repaid the fund in gold, amounting to just over 400 metric tons, or one-eighth of the IMF's total gold holdings. It was this amount of gold that was recently approved for sale by the IMF's executive board. When carrying out any type of gold sale, the IMF has a systemic responsibility to avoid causing disruptions that would adversely impact gold holders and gold producers, as well as the functioning of the gold market.